Hi, and welcome to another LRCC soundbite. Imagine the scene. You've been picked as one of Jesus' disciples. You're travelling around with the greatest teacher ever. You're learning loads. You're helping control the crowds. You're, you're welcomed by people wherever you go. Do you picture this group of people arguing? Well, they did. <laughs> they weren't proud of it either, because when Jesus asked them what they were arguing about, they shuffled their feet and looked around like naughty school children that had been caught doing something they shouldn't have been doing. Turns out that they were arguing about which one of them was the greatest. Was it the one? Was it the disciple that was picked first? Was it the one who had the best job before they started following Jesus? Was it the one who fought for freedom from the Romans before joining Jesus? Who could it be? Well, they never told Jesus what they were arguing about, but Jesus figured it out anyway. And rather than answer them, he told them told them one thing, and then he gave them another illustration to, to help explain it. First, he told them that the greatest would be the one who was the best servant, the one who served all the others. Now, this made no sense at all. Uh, in their society, the greatest was the one who was served. They would have the place of honour at the dinner table. They would be welcomed first by the host when they arrived. They wouldn't be found looking after everybody else. That's the person that would have been the least among them. And then Jesus saw a child nearby. So he asked the child, "Just, you know, would you just come and stand with us for a moment? Right, right in the middle of the group ne next to Jesus. Now, children were very much at the bottom of the pecking order in Jewish society. You know the expression, seen and not heard? Well, they were probably neither seen nor heard very often. So this was a little bit odd for this child, but Jesus said to the disciples that right now in this moment, this child was the greatest amongst them. He said society had it wrong, and whoever welcomed this child, it was, it was like welcoming Jesus himself. Whatever you did for this child, it was like you were doing it for Jesus. Very different. Now, I don't work for the church full time. I spend most of my week working for BT and I find it really interesting that this idea of servant leadership or looking after the ones who were previously felt to be the lowest, this is becoming really significant in the workplace as well. There are more and more good leaders in business that adopt this servant-like approach. One of the things that I say to my team is that I, I think my job is to create an environment in which they can succeed, whatever that means. And, you know, if one day that means going out and buying them all pizza because they're working late on something, then that's what I need to do. If it means going and sorting out some trivial problem that's irritating and distracting them, then I need to do that. I trust my team completely. I let them figure out the best solution, whatever problem I give them. And I like to give them the freedom to fix it in the way they see fit. You know, it's in business, it's seen as something relatively new and radical. But in reality, it's thousands of years old. So maybe there's something for all of us to think a little bit about what Jesus said. Being a servant to others isn't about letting them walk all over you but it is about leading and interacting in a way that puts the needs of others first and looks after the ones that others might ignore. I do hope you have a great week. God bless you and I'll see you next time.